very important molecule and what we can uh, what we can see here is that um, it's basically affecting the function of, of multiple organs and how they function or NAD is being affected by multiple factors such as exercise. So for example, exercise can boost our NAD levels or we can actually consume some foods that are rich in NAD such as uh, some, some fish, tuna, sardines, mushrooms as well and so on. And we can also uh, take some NAD boosters which are basically molecules that can boost the production of NAD in our bodies. And as you can see here for a plethora of organs, NAD plays quite a crucial role. And um, if we take it one step further and see what's going on um, at a molecular level, we can see that NAD is implicated in, um, in, in chromosome stability and DNA repair um, because it also serves as a substrate for, for, for different molecular players such as PARPs, uh, which is a very important family of, 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 of enzymes that is basically regulating DNA repair and so on. Uh, sirtuins as well that ha that are uh, playing a role in, in longevity, different longevity mechanisms. So for example, sirtuin 1 uh, is regulating multiple processes such as autophagy, but also um, DNA repair as well. And in fact, uh, whenever we have DNA break somewhere in, in the cell, uh, sirtuin 1 is one of the uh, uh, of the first players that are getting on side of the damage and, and trying to repair this. Uh, Sir 2 and 3 has to do with mitochondrial function and how much mitochondria we're actually producing. So mitochondrial biogenesis, which is a very important process and without it, we won't be having um, any energy production. Uh, and then it's implicated in, in brain health and neurotransmitter health. Um, there is a bunch of studies out there demonstrating the role uh, of NAD in, in immune cell signal as well and, and energy enzyme activity, um, longer telomeres and so on. And what we're seeing here is that there are actually three ways to synthesize NAD in the body. So there is the uh, um, there is a pathway called, called press hunter pathway. There is the de novo synthesis um, of NAD that, uh, that can be affected by the amino acid tryptophan. And there is also this pathway here where basically we do uh, we can consume foods that that could be containing uh, NR nicotinamide riboside that would then be converted into NMN and then the NMN would be converted into one step uh, into NAD. So as we previously said, there are different uh, NAD boosters out there in a supplement. Um, there are, there is even nicotinamide riboside. Um, in a supplement that people can take. However, it needs to be converted into NMN first, and then it does produce the NAD in the cell. We recently have discovered uh, a transporter um, that is basically ensuring that NMN is being uh, transported into the cell easily. So it does have increased bioavailability. And, um, and what we're seeing here is that um, as it, it basically orchestrates so many physiological functions. It's also very important to mention that uh, as we age, NAD is being decreased. And that's the primary reason why we actually need to, um, to, to basically supplement with an NAD booster to make sure that all of this essential processes in the cell are being um, taken care of. And we do have enough NAD for everything to function well. So sirtuins, PARPs and other other enzymes, they are using NAD as a substrate, as a fuel to function. And without it, they won't be able to do their job well. And obviously this is the reason why NAD is so important. So um, from what we've seen so far, there are multiple studies showing benefits um, of NAD, of NAD uh, boosting molecules in animals such as mice. And then uh, um, most recently, we also had a couple of human studies uh, coming out this year that are basically replicating those effects in, um, in humans. So we can basically um, go ahead and then um, and then have a look at what we've seen so far so far in terms of um, insulin increase and in diabetes in animal studies. And there are actually quite a few studies out there showing that there are multiple beneficial effects 
um, in, in, in basically wild type mice and also um, diet and age induced um, uh, type two diabetic mice. And what we're seeing is that um, NMN is very well tolerated at, at, at a quite a big dosage. Um, and then also they show uh, improved insulin sensitivity uh, as well as plasma lipid profile um, after a long-term administration of NMN. And we're seeing here that after 12 months of NMN, um, we do have a significant uh, improved in insulin sensitivity compared to the body weight match control group. And not only that, but if we have a closer look at this study, we will see that there, there are uh, various factors that have been positively affected in NMN treated mice, included, uh, including the, um, um, the age-related body gain that was basically um, that was basically improved because as we age, we, we basically gain weight much easier because our metabolism slows down. Um, the energy metabolism, the, the insulin sensitivity were all affected uh, as well as the lipid metabolism here. And then uh, scientists al also shown that there, there, there were beneficial changes in gene expression and mitochondrial oxidative metabolism and so on, along with a couple of other symptoms, including eye function and bone density and so on. So this study was quite, um, a quite detailed and um, again, 12 months of, of, of mouse life is actually quite a long time. So uh, this would equal to uh, many, many years of, of, of NMN supplementation in humans. Just for, just for, I'd worked with mice in the past and they would live around two years, three years max. That, that's, yeah. yeah, some of the mice that we were using, yes. Yeah, that's correct. I think that a 34 uh, month old mouse is an equivalent of a 90 year old human, something right. like this. <laughs> yeah, so um, if we go into human studies now, so there is, um, there is a study that has been published uh, a couple of months ago uh, in pre-diabetic women uh, that showed that supplementation with NMN for uh, 10 weeks at um, only 250 mg of NMN on a, on a daily basis uh, in pre-diabetic, postmenopausal, obese or overweight women um, demonstrated that um, this woman basically had increased insulin sensitivity and muscle remodeling as well. Um, they had an increase of NAD intermediates as well in their blood, um, uh, suggested basically higher NAD turnover. And what, uh, what the, um, the researchers commented on the study is that the improvement that they saw in muscle insulin sensitivity in this study is basically uh, similar to the improvement someone would see after 10% weight loss. So for example, if you're, um, if you're let's say, um, 70 kg, this would mean that you would lose 7 kg of, uh, of body weight in order to see this kind of improvement. So quite a big deal. Deal. And what uh, what they also saw um, in the muscle content as well is that there was um, there was no change in in the content of NAD and nicotinamide, which is another precursor. However, what we're seeing here is that there was an in, a significant increase in the intermediates of NAD, basically suggesting that NMN um, is is basically absorbed and then it's increasing the overall NAD turnover tur turnover in muscle tissue. So this is very, very good news because um, I heard someone arguing the other day that um, actually um, accum accumulation of NMN or nicotinamide would be toxic in cells. But what we're seeing is that we do have quite a rapid um, turnover and quite a rapid absorption of NMN, meaning that there is no toxic toxic buildup um, in tissues and we only can see um, beneficial effects of NMN supplementation. Now, in terms of endothelial function and muscle benefits of NMN, um, there is something uh, quite interesting going on here because there is the, um, uh, we, we already know that there is um, a decrease of our, uh, of our angiogen angiogenesis, which is the- Can um, I interrupt for a second? Can you uh, sure. tell the public, the audience, what is uh, endothelium? What is endothelium just for the information? Mm -hmm. So it's basically um, the endothelial cells are the cells that are related to our uh, vasculature that are making our our, 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 our arteries and, and, and so on. So it's basically cells that are um, that are essential for us to to create new arteries and so on. 
and new blood vessels. So um, what we're seeing here is that as we age, our ability to, to build new vessels and new arteries is decreasing. This would lead to decreased blood flow in different tissues, including the muscle tissues. And this is why we're seeing basically decreased, um, decreased muscle retention as we age. So this is a condition that is called sarcopenia, which means that uh, we lose our muscles as we age, we lose our, our, our muscles muscle mass. So what's going on here is that um, this phenomenon is uh, quite tightly related to the fact that we, we are not able to supply more blood into our muscles in order to maintain it. And this is, uh, this is why it kind of atrophies. So what we're seeing here is that with, um, with supplementation with, um, with NMN or NR in mice, uh, which is the other NAD booster, is that we are boosting the ability of the body to create new vessels and new um, new arteries and so on in order to support muscle function. So this is what has been demonstrated in mice um, for, for quite a few years now, actually. And then this year, there were two human studies that um, came out in humans that have, uh, have shown um, that uh, supplementation with NMN from 250 mg of and up to 1.2 grams is uh, uh, first it's safe, right? So this was a very important finding from this study. And then from there, um, the first study was in 10 elderly healthy men that were 65 years old and over. Um, and then what they uh, what they saw in the study is that NMN raised the NAD serum levels and prevent, prevented age related muscle dysfunction. Now, the second study was, um, was uh, a bit more interesting in my opinion. So they actually had uh, four groups of participants. One was a placebo group that was not taking any NMN. And then they had three groups that were taking either 300 uh, milligrams of NMN, 600 or 1.2 grams of NMN for six weeks. And then they evaluated uh, um, the aerobic capacity and the cardiovascular fitness of the participants that were healthy um, adults of mixed gender from 27 years old to 50 years old, um, and they were amateur runners. So the, what, what they saw in this in the study was that their um, their um, their ventilatory threshold was increased. So basically, how they utilize oxygen, um, the the capacity of their uh, body to utilize oxygen was increased. The V two O mask. Um, the VT one, so ventilatory threshold one. Um, that is basically when um, you, you, let's say you're uh, you're running or you're doing some sort of another um, aerobic capacity uh, like cycling, and then at some point you start breathing heavily because now your uh, your uh, your tissues are requiring more oxygen. This is the ventilatory threshold one that was improved in this study, and then. Uh, the ventilatory threshold too is the uh, condition where you're basically running out of breath after heavy exercise. Um, this was also um, this was also improved in this study. So quite an interesting study, and it was really nice that um, they had different um, different groups um, that were taking different dosages of NMN that they were testing, and both of those studies were pl uh, were placebo controlled as well. So they they both had a placebo group that was not taking any. NMN as well. So they were able to compare the results here. Question, uh, question. W what was the improvement by how much? Do we have an idea about how much was the improvement? Um, I don't, I don't have this data at the moment. Yeah, but I think that I actually have an extra slide here that I wasn't, um, um, I, I, I wasn't sure if I'm going to show it or not. So I think that once, uh, because you asked me, we can as well uh, go here and see what's going on uh, in the study and what was exactly the, the outcome. So um, basically what, what we saw during the ventilatory threshold one that we described, um, NMN managed to increase the heart rate uh, of the participants, which is basically beneficial because uh, this means that you can, again, utilize better the oxygen. It, it's related to the oxygen consumption um, that the participants have in the study. Um, and then it, it improved the, uh, the overall power. So basically the, um, the endurance of the participants and it increased the maximum oxygen consumption as well. Now, 
during um, during the ventilatory threshold too, the NMN uh, supplementation also managed to to improve the overall uh, power, but not the other um, not the other indicators that they 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 studied. They they were recording in the study. However, I think that it would be really interesting to uh, to kind of compare this data in a study that would be measuring the same uh, biomarkers, but in different populations. Because here uh, we uh, we should mention that all of the participants were healthy. So perhaps in um, in either older participants or participants with uh, certain health conditions, the results would be different because. Because here the population was very healthy to start with um, uh, from the start. Um, and then also what they um, what they managed to, um, to to demonstrate here is that the cardiopulmonary metrics were not affected or improved by NMN. However, when they looked at some indicators of, of uh, skeletal muscle related function, they did see a significant improvement, meaning that basically, again, NMN is helping your muscles to utilize as much um, oxygen as possible. Um, and it would be very interesting to see um, uh, a study that would basically be investigating whether NMN could have the same effect as we saw in, in mice, where there is increased, um, um, increased production of, of angiogenesis, so increased production of, uh, of, of new blood vessels. And just to summarize the study, basically um, in, in this six weeks um, study, first of all, um, it was really nice to see that they, uh, these researchers amped up the dosage of NMN up to 1.2 grams. We didn't have such a study before, but here um, they demonstrated that it's completely safe. And then um, they, um, they did um, basically suggest that um, the exercise that uh, those participants were doing during the six week period combined with NMN uh, enhanced the, the VT1, the ventilatory threshold, and then the other uh, indicators that we uh, mentioned here, including the, um, this skeletal muscle related function. And um, what, what they concluded is that NMN supplementation is basically um, is basically increase the ventilatory threshold compared to exercise alone because again they did have a placebo group where participants were just working out for these six weeks but they were not taking NMN and um, they concluded that this is uh, due to increased um, oxygen utilization by the skeletal muscle. So that was